cells and their relationship with plant pathogenic fun fungi, bacteria, viruses, and mycoplasma. So uh, this is the next slide. I will start with the introduction. Um, a disease vector, a disease vector is an organism capable of transmitting pathogens from one host to another. Insects transmits all type of pathogens, uh, which we already know that uh, we are acquainted with the fungus, virus, bacteria, and phytoplasma. These are all the pathogens which we know. And uh, in the insect kingdom, we can uh, see many, uh, many, many examples of insects such as aphids, leaf hoppers, thrips, psyllids, uh, plant hoppers, which come under the uh, order Hemiptera, and also other than these, Coleopterans, Dipterans, Mites, Thysanopterans, and Dermopterans. All these insects can transmit diseases in the plant kingdom. Then, insect transmission. Insects, as I already told, insects are the most important group. Uh, more than 400 species have been reported to transmit plant viruses. About 99% of arthropod vectors are insects. More than 80% of these belong to Homoptera, in which Aphrodite family being the most important group. In general, plant viruses transmitted by one group of vectors are not transmitted by other group, but there is an exception that is tobacco ring spot virus which can be seen transmitted by nematodes and thrips and also sometimes by the spider mites too. Now I will talk about the modes of pathogen transmission via insects. So simply if we classify it, we can uh, see that passively insects can be seen feeding or walking through the infected plant area. Secondly, uh, they can be seen feeding or infecting the plant tissues by sucking the sap and carrying the pathogen on their mouth parts using the stylets, for example, in aphidide. And thirdly, by ingesting the pathogen with the plant sap and subsequently which circulates in their body until with or without the multiplication of the insect inside their bodies. Uh, now there is a general, generalized idea that is plant diseases, transmission and overview, which is taken through the workshop summary, uh, diseases and emerging threat to human, animal, and plant health. Uh, it is the data source from where we, I have collected data. And in this pie chart, we can clearly see how the plant diseases are prevalent and how these are transmitted in the ecosystem. So firstly, if we see around this pie chart, it is uh, clearly seen that bacteria are one of the most important contributors, uh, which is around 48%. And then there is a 24% contribution of the viruses. And after that, uh, we can see fungus, we can see mycoplasma and nematodes and uh, these protozoans, which contribute a little less than the major contributors. And otherwise we can see in the ring chart, it also depicts uh, uh, one of the major data, which shows that uh, the transmission in the uh, agro ecosystems is mainly through insect transmission which is 53%. Then mechanical transmission is also there. And 13% uh, is by arachnids, which includes mite sticks, etc. And 11% is through nematode transmission. Types of vector transmission. Earlier, we have studied the modes, and now we are studying about the types. On the basis of the method of transmission and persistence in the vectors, viruses may be classified into three categories. Um, first one is the non-persistent. As the name suggests, it is non-persistent, so it will not be sustained in the body of the vector. And easily, uh, they can be uh, taken up in the stylet of the insects. And these viruses are mouth part inhibiting and possess very short acquisition period, which is uh, around seconds to minutes, the efficiency of the transmission of such a virus is greatly affected by modifying the time of feeding and by starving the vectors before and after feeding. So this gives a generalized idea of its management also. Examples in the non-persistent 
uh, viruses would be mostly aphids carry uh, carry such type of viruses and uh, uh, the next category will be after non persistent it is semi persistent the viruses are carried in the anterior regions of the gut of the vector that is they are uh, staying in the mid gut of the insects where they may multiply to a certain extent or they may also not multiply sometimes they reach inside the gut but do not go past the foregut of the vector vectors do not normally remain infective after a molt presumably because the viruses are lost when the foregut intima is shed the efficiency of the transmission increases with prolonged feeding and retention period that is it takes around hours to uh, several days and the examples in this will be considered as several leaf hoppers and a few species of aphid transmitting viruses and the classification of these viruses may be considered under coli colimoviruses and cholesteroviruses the uh, third category will be persistent so uh, out of these three categories only these type of viruses will be sustained in the body of the insects that is it can be trans ovarial also and trans stadial also which also again is very similar uh, that it is very evident from the name that uh, that now from next uh, one generation to the next generation it can be transmitted uh, through egg to the next generation and through stadium or through the exovi uh, to the next uh, larval stages these viruses when acquired by a vector pass through the midgut wall to the salivary glands from where they can infect new hosts such viruses may multiply within tissues of a vector uh, in that case we will call them uh, propagative because they are uh, they are propagating inside the insect's body which retain the ability to transmit the viruses for the several days and in some instances the rest of its life such viruses are called circulative or circulative propagative uh, we can simply say that uh, the uh, persistent can be classified into two basic categories which is persistent circulative that is it on just circulates inside the body of the insect and then transmission uh, happens and then spread of viruses there but the second category will be persistent propagative that uh, not only does uh, it circulate uh, the virus circulates inside the body of the insect they also propagate inside the insect body and the examples would be mostly the leaf hoppers this is a generalized diagram and uh, uh, some history about this will be watson and uh, roberts on the basis of the virus retention time they classified uh, the vectors into persistent and non and non persistent and uh, after uh, some time in 1958 sylvester introduced the term semi persistent so this diagram depicts the root of the virus inside the insect body so we can uh, clearly see here that uh, from the food canal when it ingests some saps uh, the virus present in uh, in one infected uh, plant gets inside the uh, gut of the insect from foregut to midgut to hindgut and then uh, hemocele and then through salivary canal it again goes to the uh, fresh or the disease free virus free uh, plant and uh, the three modes that can also be easily under, understood from here that uh, uh, is uh, that in the non persistent there is no um, carrying of insect inside the insect uh, carrying of the insect inside the insect body and uh, in the uh, persistent and the semi persistent uh, there is uh, transfer or the uh, transmission of virus inside the insect body this is the impact of viral diseases and uh, this is a generalized table i have taken and uh, this tells about uh, there are uh, varying level of losses through uh, different uh, vectors and in the presence of different viral pathogens in different crops namely okra papaya cotton cucumber potato banana cardamom groundnut sugarcane papaya rice and chili which form a major part of the horticultural and agricultural ecosystem where references have also been given which can be checked out later then plant viruses plant viruses if we talk about uh, just the plant viruses uh, for uh, right now plant uh, viruses are the obligate parasites and they need to be transmitted for their uh, survival because they uh, use 
the host's uh, reproductive machinery for their survival. Otherwise, they are also called the borderline organisms. Almost all the viruses enter and multiply in phloem and in parenchyma cells. Virus transmission studies are important to know how healthy plants get infected via virus spread in field and consequently devising in its control measures. Establishing biological relationship of interaction between the virus and its vector is also important. And in this way, we can study with uh, these examples as per rough estimates also tells us that 30 to 40% of the losses caused by the plant diseases is due to direct or indirect effects of transmission of pathogens by insects. Now, there are two types of plant virus and transmissions. Firstly, horizontal transmission. It is assisted by vectors, which may be human. Pruning shears can also be there and uh, tools and direct or external contamination can be included in the horizontal transmission. Secondly, if we see the second category, it is the vertical transmission. It occurs when a plant gets its from parent, uh, parent material or the parent plant, either the asexual uh, propagations, which we already know about, that is cutting, grafting, etc., or in the sexual reproduction via the infected seeds, because these can also act as the carriers of the virus, therefore regarded as the non-insect transmission. Uh, sap inoculation can be one method uh, in which tobacco mosaic virus can be uh, one of the prevalent example. Potato uh, virus Y is one of another example. Then seed through fungi, through vegetative and graft transmissions, through nematodes and through daughter, the transmission of virus can be there. Terminology basically used in the virus transmission. And here I'll talk about the acquisition access period. The time from which initially virus-free vector is allowed to assess a virus source and could, if it desire, feed on the other source. The feeding has yet not started, but the, it is the time period uh, when it initially takes up the virus. Acquisition feeding period. Time period necessary for successful acquisition of the virus by its vector, which then becomes virulent virus to spread the virus. Third, inoculation excess period. Now, the time for which a virus carrying vector is allowed to assess a virus free plant and could it feed on it. Inoculation feeding period. The time period for which a virus carrying vector appears to be feeding on a virus free plant to transmit it. Transmission threshold. The minimum initial time period that a vector need to acquire a virus and inoculate it into the virus free plant is called as a transmission threshold. Infective capacity or basically which we generally take into consideration is the retention period of a vector. That means for how much time it can remain a virulent In the definition term, it is the time period for which a vector carries, retain or transmits the virus to the host plant and remains viruliferous. Lastly, <clears throat> the incubation period or the latent period. The time period from the start of the acquisition feeding period until the vector can infect the plant with the virus. When the uh, virus uh, inoculum is lost, then the latent period is stopped. Virus vector interaction. This is the generalized idea where we can see the virus family, type of vector, mode of transmission, and location of virus. So here are the examples of the virus families. Uh, firstly, Gemini viridae and the Begumo viruses. Uh, these are generally carried, out, uh, carried with the help of the uh, white fry. Then double-stranded uh, RNA viruses, if we talk about. So we can consider this a Rio viridae family where the leaf hoppers uh, carry these Rio viruses. Then positive standard RNA viruses. These includes a list of uh, these viruses, which are mainly carried by aphids and sometimes a mealybug and plant hoppers and leaf hoppers also. Then negative standard RNA viruses. These are rhabdoviruses, MR viruses, tenui viruses, and bunny viridae. These are, uh, and aphids, leaf hoppers, plant hoppers, erifid mites, plant hoppers, thrips, 
these are the carriers respectively and reverse transcribing dna virus and one of the most important example of this is the cholimoviruses which includes uh, cauliflower mosaic virus and it can be carried uh, with the help of aphid mealybug and leaf hopper and it the mode of transmission would be non circulative disease is caused by the leaf hoppers and plant hoppers so now we will be taking up step by step uh, some of the important insect vectors and we are starting with the leaf hoppers and the plant hoppers mostly hopper transmitted viruses are persistent circulative or persistent propagative so it is very clear that uh, there is a no uh, non circulate uh, there is no non persistent uh, method the two methods which are there are the persistent ones only and are transmitted by only one or by few closely related species of the hopper vectors only few leaf hoppers we uh, know the family of the leaf hoppers that is cicadelidae and the plant hoppers delphacidae uh, have uh, the species that are vectors of the viruses so uh, not all of them are vectors but some of uh, the members of these families are vectors so uh, Uh, there is this semi persistent transmission and the persistent transmission in semi persistent transmission two viruses are there mainly first one maize chloric chlorotic dwarf virus and rice tungro spherical virus i know you might have uh, learned these two names earlier also and these are acquired by the vectors gramineella nigrifrons and nephotetics virescens respectively from their hosts within about 15 minutes and are retained by their vectors for one to few days so the time also tells us that it is a semi persistent uh, transmission now the persistent transmission circulative viruses and propagative viruses as we have also earlier discussed about this in the persistent there are only two types of viruses circulative and uh, propagative in circulative only two genera of germinal viruses germinal viruses are seen first is master virus and curto virus second one is the curto virus and these are transmitted by leaf hoppers in the persistent circulative manner and uh, then propagative viruses there are four families and genera of the plant viruses that replicate within the cell of their insect vectors as well as the cells of the host plants two of these families are rhabdoviridae and rheoviridae the two genera that have propagative viruses are tenui virus members of which are transmitted by plant hoppers and uh, mara uh, marafi virus which are vectored by the leaf hopper delebilis medis in continuation uh, there are two major diseases one is the uh, rice dwarf and uh, second one is the rice tungro virus and uh, there is uh, nothing much in it but yeah uh, we can uh, discuss about the vectors that is loud delphax Uh, stri uh, striatellus and the second one will be you uh, you cannot sepanora and alfi albifacia these are the species known to transmit this particular disease in a persistent propagative and non transoviral manner so here it is important that it is non transoviral although it is persistent propagative but uh, out of all these uh, vectors one of the important one is uh loud delphax striatellus it because it is the main vectors of and it is found in the high density in the fields of rice second one is the rice tungro the word tungro means degenerated growth and the vector for it il, uh, will be tungro virus and uh, this is uh, mainly we have seen that it is the result of the uh, two concurrent infection uh, that means two types of viruses are present first one is the single stranded rna virus and the second one is double stranded rna virus both these viruses are transmitted by nephotetic virescence in the semi persistent manner disease is transmit transmitted by aphids aphids carry plant viruses using flexible pair of stylets that is when we know that it is uh, based upon the stylets we also know that it is non circulative because it will not go inside the system of the insects or the host in such a transmission the insect acquires the virus from the plant by feeding on it or 
only only for a few seconds or at most minutes and is usually able to transmit it for only a few minutes after it acquired it most of that is uh, nearly about 300 known species of aphid born plant viruses are styled born so we can simply say that um, our, most of the aphid born uh, vectors are styled born some of the most important groups of the plant viruses such as uh, in the genera potiviridae cucumo virus alfamo virus and the colimo virus transmitted by mysis persicae and are styled born non persistent viruses second mode will be in the aphids this is semi persistent uh, viruses are there the best known semi persistent viruses are colimo viruses and persist and in the persistent viruses these are generally transmitted by one or few species of the aphids and cause symptoms characterized by leaf yellowing and leaf rolling so these are the symptoms caused by the aphids in continuation persistent can be further divided into two persistent circulative viruses and persistent propagative viruses persistent circulative viruses these include primarily the luteo viruses such as barley yellow dwarf virus and the nano viruses such as banana bunchy top virus so it's uh, um, its vector we have already studied most of the time it is pantalonia nigro nervosa and uh, persistent propagative virus persistent viruses are the, uh, transmitted primarily by the leaf hoppers and plant hoppers but several members of the rhabdoviridae multiply in and are transmitted by their aphid vector second uh, secondly we will study about the major diseases the disease is the maize dwarf mosaic virus vector of this is aphid and these aphids have the potential to transmit both per, uh, both in the persistent and non persistent manner the broad range includes uh, rupelosiphum maidis maisis persicae rupelosiphum paddy rupelosiphum poi brevicorine brassicae which is the cabbage aphid disease is caused by mites now after us uh, uh, taking a brief look among the insects although some of the insects have still remained but now we will shift to the diseases caused by the vectoring of my vectoring of mites uh, that is when mites carry some of the viruses and they cause huge destructions in the agricultural feeds several members of the mite family aerophidi transmit viruses of the genus rhinoviruses which may cause many serious diseases in diseases in grain crops two mite species of the family tetranicidae transmit two plant viruses one of them transmitting the peach mosaic virus which is very famous all mites in these families feed by piercing plant cells and sucking their contents aerophid mites are small and move little by themselves and instead they are spread by winds mites can acquire virus from infected host plants within 15 minutes from the start of feeding and can transmit it to the healthy plant within a similar duration mites acquire the virus as nymphs but not as adults they carry the virus through the molds and remain infected for 6 to 9 days while if we talk about the tetranicid mites te tetranicid mites or the spider mites are larger there are 0.8 mm long pre adult mites readily acquire the virus and they as well as the adults so here the nymphs and adults both can transmit the virus efficiently disease white streak mosaic virus vector uh, one of the major vector of it is aseria tulipi and it transmits both in semi persistent manner and circulative manner now we shift to the white flies white fly as we all know are one of the major contributors of diseases uh, of damage caused in agricultural crops mostly in uh, protected cultivation white flies transmit the viruses in the genus begumoviruses of the family gemmaviridae 
All these viruses in the genus Crinivirus and some of the genus in the cholesteroviruses of the family Cholesteroviridae are also due to the transmission caused by the white flies. White fly adults are winged, but only the first instar among the larvae is mobile. So these uh, early instars and also the winged adults, they can cause high uh, so much destruction in the plant fields. Only a few species of the white fly transmit viruses, mostly in the tropics and subtropics, but the viruses they transmit cause very severe diseases. So their impact is huge. And uh, now we will uh, uh, take up in detail which type of viruses are taken up with the white flies. Begumoviruses. Begumoviruses are the transmitted by Bemisia temesi white flies, while the crinivirus and white and the white fly transmitted cholesterol viruses are vectored by the white fly trilurodes vaporariorum, which is the uh, greenhouse white fly. And the type B of the Bemisia tabesai, also referred as B argentifolia, is one of the major contributors in the Begumoviridae family. Begumoviruses are bipartite Gemini viruses and are transmitted by white flies in the persistent circulative manner. And a helper uh, a factor coded by the virus seems to be involved in its transmission. And the second type will be the semi-persistent manner. So the white fly transmitted monopartite cholesterol viruses and the bipartite crani viruses reach only the foregut of the uh, vector and are transmitted in such a manner that they uh, cause huge losses by doing uh, transmission in the semi-persistent manner. The first disease that we will take up in the white flies will be uh, cucurbit uh, leaf crumple. And its vector is uh, silver leaf white fly, that is Bemisia tabesai. So this particular virus is transmitted in a persistent and circulative manner. So the uh, virus will go inside the system uh, and, and uh, with an acquisition period of approximately 30 minutes will be taken and the latent period till uh, the virulifierousness of the vector is lost, that is six to eight hours is studied. The inoculation period is likely in the range of 30 minutes or less. In continuation, cucurbit, uh, cucurbit yellow stunting disorder. This is another important disease and the vector is again Bemisia tabesai, the same vector which I have uh, talked about earlier. This is transmitted in a semi-persistent manner. So the mode is different, but uh, the vector is same. Acquisition and the inoculation periods are less than two hours. Thus, adults can acquire and transmit the virus in less than four hours. In controlled studies, it was observed that this particular virus can persist in the vector for seven to nine days with a half life of three days. Then an another important disease is tomato yellow leaf curl. So mostly leaf curls are transmitted by white flies and uh, uh, the tomato leaf curl uh, uh, virus. This is one of the important viruses and it is vectored by the same Bemisia tabesai. It is transmitted in yet another different kind of manner. That is, it is transmitted in the persistent and circulative manner by Bemisia tabesai. The acquisition and the inoculation period are 20 and 10 min minutes respectively. This virus has a 20 to 24 hour latent period, which provides the opportunity for insecticides to impact secondary spreads. So it can spread easily. In some cases, this virus can also be transmitted within the white flies, both sexually from one uh, male to female and female to male and trans -ovarially, ovarially also, that is from female to the eggs. Diseases caused by thrips or the Thysanoptera. About 10 species of the thrips of the family Thripidae are the vectors of about a dozen viruses belonging to four genera. These four genera are very important Carmoviruses, Ilar viruses, Sobomoviruses, and Topsoviruses. 
we can later on study about uh, which members are included in these four important families. The tops of viruses are transmitted in the persistent propagative manner. So there is persistent uh, persistent manner and also the cell mul multiplication will be inside the insects, while the viruses of the other genera are transmitted in pollen carried by the thrip vectors and by the mechanical damage during the feeding of the vector. Because we have generally, uh, if we see that uh, when, where can we find the thrips in, in any crop, they're always present on the floral parts. So they can transmit the virus through the pollen also, but uh, tops of viridae, viruses are transmitted through the persistent propagative manner. So in this way, they can act as an efficient vector of these tops of viruses. By far, the most important thrips transmitted viruses are the tops of viruses, which include the wide, widespread and several tomato spotted wilt virus. This is one of the example of the uh, tops of viruses and the impatience necrotic spot virus. Impatience is one of the uh, flower crop impatiens balsamina. In the tops of viruses, only the larvae, but not the adults can acquire the virus. So it is also one of the important point to note that uh, from the exam point of view, only the larvae uh, can acquire the virus and their ability to acquire it this decreases with the ages, with the age. And uh, one of the foremost examples that I've already discussed, but we, I will again tell it this is the tomato uh, spotted wilt virus and its vector is definitely Franklinella occidentalis. It is a thrips of important commercial floral crops in India. Disease is transmitted by mealybugs. Although mealybug uh, is not uh, one of the very important vectors, but still we will continue to uh, hear about it. Mealybug bugs do act as vectors primarily on some perennial plants in the tropics and subtropics, they move slowly on the plant. This is one of the reasons, right? They move slowly on the plants and therefore are not as efficient virus vectors and those discussed previously. Mealybugs feed on the phloem and they are the vectors of the Badna viruses. Try to search the members of the Badna viruses, such as cacao swollen shoot virus, several cholesterol vi viruses, such as grapevine leaf roll associated viruses and pineapple mealybug wilt associated viruses. And some of the remainings are trichoviruses such as grape virus A and grape virus B. <clears throat> Mealybugs acquire the viruses after feeding on diseased plants for only a few, about 20 minutes and retain the virus for up to 24 hours from 20 minutes to 24 hours. So the transmission resembles non-persistent or the semi-persistent mechanism because they will not stay uh, for longer uh, pe uh, periods of time inside the aphids, inside the body of the insects. Sorry, aphids is not there. Disease, cacao swollen shoot virus disease and vector is mealybug belonging to pseudococcidae family and it transmits in the semi-persistent manner, which has been studied earlier. The most efficient mealybug transmitters of the virus include the planococcoids, nichalensis, planococcus citri, pherizia vigrata of brinjal, and species which are also dominant on cocoa fields in Ghana. Beetle transmission and um, Acquisition and feeding uh, period uh, is up to 24 hours only, not later than that. And uh, a mode will be the persistent transmission. Examples will be cowpea mosaic virus uh, and turnip yellow mosaic. And phyllotrata is one of the um, family. It belongs to chrysomelidae family. Nematode transmission. Nematodes as vectors of plant viruses was pro uh, proposed by Habit and Rusky, that is Habit, it will in 1958 here. Two single stranded RNA viruses, virus genera, that is Nepo virus and Tobara virus, they have been named. And Nepo viruses include the Corm uh, Comoviridae family. And there is no uh, such family has been assigned to Tobara viruses, 
but uh, there are a few examples of those so firstly tobra viruses tobra viruses or the tobacco rattle viruses have nematode vectors and uh, these include two ex, uh, most important uh, what do we say ectoparasitic nematodes these are uh, trichodorus and paratrichodorus species and in nepo viruses the only known nematode vectors are in the genera zymphenema and longidorus species and uh, about the retention site of these three important nematode species are uh, for longidorus it is odontostyle area and for zymphenema it is odontophore and the esophagus region and trichodorus it is in the onchostyle and the esophagus so sorry um this tobacco net, uh, necrotic virus it is transmitted by fungus that is olpidium brassicae when we talk about the fungus it is one of the major example and uh, barley yellow mosaic virus it is transmitted by the plasmodiophorid fungus and the fun name of the fungus is polymyxa graminis which is an obligate root parasite so these were some of the most important examples and in brief i have tried to incorporate most of the examples in here but we can always improve our notes and now i will take up the ipm for the vector control because uh, most of uh, these uh, these vectors we have studied they are major vectors of viral diseases i will be mostly taking up upon the uh, control for the viral diseases so integrated pest management for vector control control measures are not known for a majority of the viral diseases because they are difficult to control as there are no viricides as such that we can use uh, in the fungus in the bacteria right hence mechanical and cultural methods are mostly recommended the infected plants should be uprooted and burnt or buried to avoid the further this is the foremost and the most important control measure as we know for now avoid monoculturing of a crop use of seeds from healthy plants of a previous season these all these things we already know but these are one of the important factors which determine the effectivity of virus in the fields growing nursery in protected structures removal of infected seedlings and weed hosts from the nursery as soon as seen from outside treatment of seedlings with proper systematic fungicides to control the vector and sometimes we can also use uh, these uh, insecticides like roger or uh, malathion also to control these uh, so, so these insects which are which can be controlled through the systematic insecticides use of uh, yellow sticky traps just above the plants to control insect vectors and one of the uh, thing which i have not included here that uh, can be the treatment of uh, these um, propagative materials these also help uh, in like potato it helps for the control of potato leaf roll viruses so those can be some of the uh, prophylactic uh, prof uh, prophylactic chemical measures use of light traps to check some of the homoptera insects destroying previous year's stubble uh, susceptible crops particularly solan solanaceous weeds and voluntary plants good weed control in the crop that may be alternative host to virus and vectors transplanting dates should be adjusted to avoid peak season of the vector population as we can already see from the population dynamics and all those tactic uh, tactics we can uh, modify uh, the dates of planting use of re uh, reflective plastic mulches these are in the trend and these uh, can be seen affecting the movement of vectors in the fields use of live mulches border crops or hedges which are more attracted to the vectors than the main crops so the main crop will be in profit so that they can uh, they may not be attacked as much as the side crops these are some of the references i have taken and uh, this is from my side okay thank you sir now the topic is open for discussion dear students if you have any doubts 
or do you want to discuss any topic the session is open for discussion yes any doubts okay thank you akash sir it was a very nice lecture you have given very nice information and i am sure that students will be benefited by this lecture so thank you once again sir thank you thank you again thank you sir uh, sir now you can please stop sharing this screen okay uh, now i request dharward sir uh, to please make uh, dr guru as a co host so he can share the screen and start presentation guru hello dr yes, guru madam, yes, madam. are you ready yes madam akash completed uh, yes yes he has completed just now okay so dharwad sir guru please wait a huh? one minute okay
good afternoon guru sir you are now uh, ghost you may please say yes sir yes sir so before going to start i have also added few reference materials in the chat box uh, everyone can download in that one uh, i have shared two pdfs and uh, one youtube link and uh, how does the cuticular layers are going to be differentiated okay okay uh, guru i welcome you uh, for this afternoon session yes and, uh, dr guru pn is working as a scientist at icr cpet ludhiana and uh, he is a student uh, phd uh, student of our mpkv rahuri so i am very glad that uh, he has taken uh, he is ready to take one more session so welcome guru and i request you to please uh, uh, start said again i am telling you that i have given two uh, references uh, that are there in the uh, this one chat box you can download them for the reading if you wish otherwise also there are many notes material which are available and there is one youtube link i have shared uh, that is also can explain you well regarding how this molting happens okay so uh, among those two pdfs i am going to explain this uh, particular molting uh, and metamorphosis of insects 